Good, good evening. And thank you for coming tonight. The League of Women Voters uh, is very pleased to have uh, with us this evening uh, uh, Ms. Monica Goncalves, um, social studies students who are active participants in their civics lesson here <laughs> this evening. So we welcome them along with the candidates and uh, the others in the audience. Uh, we also appreciate our co-sponsors, the uh, video casters from the school who are videoing this for later uh, taping on the public access TV. So we like that. Um, I'd like to first start with uh, a statement. The League of Women Voters of New Jersey, a nonpartisan political organization, encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. Elections and voting are core concerns for the League of Women Voters. Leagues are committed to providing fact-based information about issues and the positions candidates take on those issues to help voters make their own decisions and participate in the electoral process. The League of Women Voters never opposes or supports candidates for office or political parties. Any use of the League name or a footage from the debate and campaign materials, literature, or advertising of any kind, including internet, cable or television has not been authorized by the League of Women Voters. Um, as a courtesy to the candidates, please turn off all cell phones and other electronic devices now, and please refrain from taking photographs during the debate. This evening's debate is going to be sort of exciting. It's for uh, the Board of Education of Linden, and we have three Candidate, I mean, we have three positions that are open, and we have six candidates who are vying for those three positions. And of those um, six, five of them are with us this evening. Uh, one of the candidates is unable to come, but we will read their opening statement. The format for the evening, um, so that you can hear from all of them, is uh, they will each start with a two-minute opening statement, and they've drawn for who will go first and who will go last. Um, after that, we're going to have questions from the audience and from um, the students. So uh, each of the candidates will have an opportunity to respond to the questions uh, for one and a half minutes. You can address a question to any one of the candidates, and that candidate will get a first chance at the question, but every one will have an opportunity to do it. Um, we would <clears throat> like you to know that uh, you will have to abide with, by uh, the league rules in uh, how you address the questions. The candidates have all agreed that they will respond by just discussing the issues and not personalities. Um, that's an important thing, that it should be an issue-related discussion this evening. Um, let's see. Uh, we are asking for the questions all to be on the cards, and so uh, we will ask that after the candidates respond that uh, nobody from the audience can add their two cents worth. <laughs> it's strictly to hear from the candidates this evening. Um, okay. Do we... I think we're all set to go, and I would like to then um, open with reading a statement from the, uh, candidate Salvatore Simonelli, who was unable to be here this evening. Um, it goes, I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for the invitation to participate in the forum for Linden Board of Education Candidates Night. However, due to a prior commitment, I am disappointed that I am, am unable to attend. My name is Salvatore Simonelli, but most people call me Ted. I am married to my wife, Beth, for 51 years, who is also a former Linden teacher. I would like to be a member of the Linden Board of Education for the following reasons. 
As a, number one, as a resident for over 52 years, I have an understanding of our community. Number two, having been an educator for 36 years, I served as a teacher, guidance counselor, middle school assistant, principal, and vice principal at Linden High School. It is this experience that will help me contribute to the Linden Board of Education. Three, I want to return some civic duty to my city. And four, I want to make a difference. And that's from Mr. Simonelli. Now we're going to hear from each of the candidates and in the order they chose. And the lucky first speaker for two minutes is Teresa Villani. Thank Way you very much. over there to the other end. <laughs> um, I would ask, though, that you hold the applause to the end, if you don't mind. Okay? Thank you. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for organizing this, and also thank you to the members of our community, our neighbors, and our students for taking time out of our, your busy schedule to get involved in our educational system. My name is Teresa Villani, and I've lived here in Linden for almost 20 years, and I'm married to my husband, David, a native Lindenite, class of Linden High School, 85, and our two children, Gianna and Francesca, who are in the Linden school system. When I was first approached to run for the Board of Ed a couple of years ago, I automatically said no, because I felt that it was due such a, it was a huge responsibility, and it deserved time and commitment that I didn't feel that I can do. For the last number of years, as the educational system has been making huge changes, I've become more and more involved in what's going on, getting educated myself with all the changes, and I've become a very vocal member of our parent community. With many year background working in crisis management on Wall Street and technology, being a Girl Scout leader, working for the library, being very involved in our community and our schools, I feel it's my obligation as a parent and as a citizen of Linden to give back to my community and to make sure that the changes that have gone on in our Linden school system in the last two or three years, changes for the better, keep going in the right direction and don't get bogged down with red tape and other things that are being forced upon some school districts. I thank you very much for taking your time to listen to us and enjoy the night. <laughs> thank you. The next speaker will be uh, Sinead Guillaume. Hi, I would like to thank everyone for coming out. And so just to give you a little bit about myself, uh, my name is Sinead Gilliam. I am Haitian American woman. I am a lifelong resident of Linden, New Jersey. I am the oldest of four and all of my siblings and I, we attend in the Linden Public District. Uh, I currently have a brother who is a senior at Linden High School. He plays for varsity football. Uh, I am a substitute teacher at Linden High School for just the district of Linden. And I am a mentor. I am a youth leader at Agape Family Worship Center. I'm also a, uh, a mentor for the juvenile at, in Newark uh, detention program. I am definitely passionate about our youth and about the students in our district. I am here because I believe that I believe that the students in our community can, can do so much more. I, my vision for them is for them to succeed, to excel, and to be leaders. And so I think with viewing me, um, I can be a vessel for them and they can see what leadership looks like. So thank you. Thank you. And the next speaker is Daniel Honan. Good evening, guys. <clears throat> Thanks for coming in and coming in and showing your support. Um, my name is Danny Honan. I'm a uh, uh, longtime Linden resident. I've been here over 18 plus years. Um, the last of those eight years, I've been in currently in the ninth ward. Um, I have two daughters going through the uh, Linden public school system. Um, I have a fourth grader in school 10, and I have an eighth grader in McManus. Um, so, with that, you know, I have a vested interest 
and trying to improve the, the Linden school system, not only for my own children, but for you guys as well and for the district. Um, a little bit about myself, I am a senior production supervisor in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, I've been there 15 plus years. Um, with that, I have a lot of experience in budgets and contracts and negotiations and, and things like that. I, I have a, uh, a lot of experience in, in, in those type of things. Um, but with that, my goal and with your support, um, I hope to be elected so I can continue to improve on the current system that's existing and hopefully be, bring something brighter and, and bigger to you guys because you guys are the future. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. And the next speaker is Alexander Alvarez. Mr. Alvarez. Good evening. I, I want to thank you for coming and uh, take part of this uh, great event. Uh, my name is Alex Alvarez. I'm not from Linden. <laughs> I grew up in uh, North Bergen, New Jersey, Hudson County. I got here in 2004. I purchased my first home and I fell in love with this city. The diversity, uh, it's great. I have three young daughters. Uh, one of them is in fourth grade and the other one is in uh, first grade, uh, school number 10. Um, I'm a teacher. I'm uh, currently in Jersey City Public Schools public schools for the last eight years. Before that, I was seven years in Patterson Public Schools. So I have 15 years of experience as a teacher, middle school science. I have a master's degree in administration supervision, and I just got my uh, post-master's degree from King University in special education. I know a lot about curriculum. I know uh, pretty much about what should be taught in the classroom, how it should be taught. Uh, I know the stuff that you guys know about, the technology. So I'm, I, I know how kids think nowadays. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm proud of this district. Uh, I've been here for two years already at the board, and I plan to continue for hopefully three more years. Thank you. Um, could you start to bring some of the questions up to me, guys? And um, before we, uh, okay. Um, now the last opening statement is going to be from um, Mr. Raymond Topoleski. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for attending. I want to thank the League of Winter Women Voters for sponsoring this. <clears throat> My name is Ray Topoleski. I've served on the Linden Board of Education since 2000. Uh, I'm a retired educator. I taught for 40 years in East Brunswick uh, in Middlesex County. My wife was a teacher here in Linden. She retired uh, in 2009. Uh, both of my children uh, went to all the Linden Public Schools and graduated uh, in 1999 and 2000. Uh, one of the prerequisites I gave my wife when we were looking to buy a house was that uh, our children, if we had any, would have to attend public school. Public schools are very important to me. I was a public school teacher. Uh, and we chose Linden because the Linden schools were good at the time, and they're better now. Uh, I ran in 2000, uh, hoping to be able to do some uh, things with the schools uh, that kind of were overlooked. And we've accomplished a lot since that time. Uh, if you went to elementary school in 2000, you could have been taught any one of a bunch of different curriculums. At this time, all the curriculums from elementary school to elementary school are the same. So it doesn't matter where you you're growing up. You'll get the same education whether you go to school one or school four or school ten. Uh, the same thing holds true with the middle schools. Uh, the advancements that we've been able to make to alleviate our uh, overcrowding with the additions to school four, school eight, school two, the high school, all of those things are things that uh, I had a hand in, I was able to help with. Uh, right now, I'm currently serving on the board as vice president. I've served on vice, as vice president for a number of years, and I did spend one year as president. I've also served on all the committees uh, from uh, personnel, which is now called uh, management, support operations, curriculum and instruction, planning and policy. So I'm uh, well aware of what we do here in the district. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And now is the time that we go to the questions, um, and we got to see what they are here. <laughs> so I'm going to sort just a little bit. Um, 
And I'm going to uh, start um, with you, Mr. Alvarez, first here. And um, one, the question is, what issues do you hope will be highlighted in the upcoming election, and what would you focus on if reelected? Primarily, I would focus on the um, student achievement overall. I would uh, look into uh, how can we improve our test scores, the HESPA, all that stuff I, that's how I'm interested in because uh, unfortunately, we go by numbers. Nowadays, we are ranked in the Star Ledger. Um, as a matter of fact, I have the ranking in Star Ledger from 2012. Um, in 2010, we ranked 326, which is that was when I saw that, I couldn't believe it. In 2012, which is uh, roughly three years ago, we went up to 284. And I'm very proud of the International Baccalaureate Program. So that's my focus, student achievement. Thank you. Okay. Miss um, Guillaume, what, would you, what issues do you think will be highlighted in the upcoming elections, and what would you focus on if elected? Some of the issues that I would focus on would be the disciplinary. I think, uh, in my opinion, that if a child had done something that is offensive towards the rule that we have in our school district, that being suspended for over five days is too much. I believe that to improve it, perhaps we could do uh, in-school suspension where the child could be in the school and also can do their work where they're not missing so many uh, days out. Uh, another thing that I would focus on would be just to make sure that I do my best with keeping our students at mind. So continuously keeping a communication with them and focusing on what they want instead of considering what I desire. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Honan, what, would you fo what do you think should be highlighted and what would you focus on? Well, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat with Alex here. I think, I think um, supplying students with education from you know, uh, gifted and talented to basic skills, I, I think there's a lot of people, residents in the city of Linden that aren't, aren't getting the basic skills that's, that's needed for them, whether it be transportation, whether the school is, there's no funding, whether the school doesn't provide it. I think that's a, uh, a big topic um, for me and, 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 and the people that, that I discuss with, and, and I think that's, that needs to be put on, uh, put on a pedestal so we can supply these individuals with the education that is needed for them to grow. Mr. Topoleski. Thank you. Uh, the most important thing uh, for this district right now is closing the achievement gap. And we've done, uh, we've been successful with, with bringing it uh, closer together, but uh, it's still not far enough. To that end, we instituted the technology one-to-one -one program where our students from third grade on have their own computers. And a program like that has to continue in order to succeed. Uh, one of the uh, biggest issues that everyone uh, sees when, when you look at students that lag behind is the opportunities that the, the uh, more advanced student have, uh, whether it's internet access or uh, their own laptops or other mobile devices. Uh, we realized that and we instituted that program so that our students would be better served. And I would hope to be able to continue that and to bring the achievement gap even closer. Thank you. Ms. Villani. The two most important points to me that I would like to concentrate on would be helping our students build a portfolio. As more and more top colleges are stepping away from standardized tests and numbers and realizing that a student is more than just a number on a test, we need to get our students to be able to present to the colleges a full portfolio showing them what they are, what kind of student they are. The other 
important key issue for me is to continuing on building our technology, which the school has done a great job with the last couple years. Being able to leverage technology from home with all the students who have their laptops, being able to not miss school on, on snow days, in school suspensions, being able to access their education round the clock. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Topolowski, and we're going to go this way. <laughs> um, and that question is going to be, uh, can you discuss your opinion of standardized testing and whether students should be able to opt out of that kind of testing? We have a couple of questions on testing. Well, the, the issue of standardized testing is one that's not going to go away anytime soon. We're all evaluated uh, through uh, tests and how we achieve. Uh, however, that shouldn't be the only uh, measure of how a student achieves. In terms of opting out, however, I don't think that's a good idea for anyone. Uh, there was a big opt-out push over the new park test, uh, which was recently given, and no one even knew what the test was yet, and none of the standards had been set. So no one knows the new standards that are uh, arriving, how they're going to be influenced by the massive number of students that didn't take the test. Uh, it's not a good idea. After a year or two, when we find out whether or not the test is valid, that's a different issue. But since it was the first time it was given, uh, it didn't seem to make a lot of sense. Uh, it was not going to be any part of any placement or graduation requirement, and still won't be for a number of years. So I don't see the harm in taking it until we find out how valid the test actually is. Uh, I'm going to take a little leeway. One of the cards asked if you could explain what the letters of park mean. Can you? I, I'm not going to ask everybody. Can anybody tell what Pearson? Yeah. I'm sorry, Pearson Assessment for Readiness uh, for a, a career and co college and career. Yeah, yeah. Okay, P Pearson Assessment, assessment for, for Readiness, readiness for, college for College and, and, career. and Career. Okay, we all got to remember that now, huh? All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Honan, uh, discuss your opinion of standardized testing and whether students should be able to opt out. Um, well, my, my personal opinion as a parent, I think um, we should have the right to opt out. Um, I think it's a, a lot of pressure that we put on, on kids these days to, to try to hold up to a certain standard. And I think going in, uh, taking a test like that is, is only gonna erupt. I, I don't think it's a good thing. Um, that's my personal opinion. Um, I think once you get up into the high school areas and, and you're going for the college tests and programs, I think then it's a different story. I think then you're mature enough I think you know what your goals are in life and what you plan on doing. That's my stance on that. Um, Ms. Uh, Guillaume, uh, what is your opinion of standardized testing and whether students should be able to opt out? Um, I'm proud because we have in our district uh, a grade three to 12 with, uh, with MacBooks. And so, uh, my views on testing, like uh, Mr. Topoleski said, is that we've been taking tests for years. Um, we try to make sure that the way that we prepare our students uh, for the tests, that they're ready for them. So uh, I don't know if, if we can control to stop standardized testing, but as far as um, opting out, I do believe that in our district, we had a movement where, or a policy rather, where uh, parents, if they did not feel comfortable for their student to take a test, that they could just write a letter and we would uh, move that student into another location. So I believe that if a parent or a student do not feel comfortable to take a test because you cannot force any student to take a test. So if they feel uncomfortable, then I believe that they should have the option to, uh, to do something else. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Alvarez, what are your thoughts on standardized testing? Uh, being a teacher, it's, uh, I 
The problem with standardized testing is once the results come back, how do you use those results? To punish people? To bring down a kid to say, wait, you only got 30% on this? That's where the problem is. I don't mind somebody taking a test, but what do you do with the results? That's the issue at hand. Mm -hmm. And that's my belief on that. Okay. So uh, do you have thoughts on opting out? First of all, we, we, this is state mandated. It's not a Linden issue. It's, it's come from Trenton. So uh, once we opt out, we're violating what the Department of Education have told us. And when you violate a law, you don't look good. Um, they said about withholding funds from the district. If you opt out, I think more than some percentage. I got a problem with that. So opting out, I don't think is the answer, not at this time. Ms. Villani, would you address it? First, let me start off by saying that I am not against standardized tests. I'm a product of standardized tests. I have taken PSATs, SATs, ACTs. I have a Regents Diploma for a number of Regents tests that I've taken. They are but one item in a portfolio that shows what a student has learned. That said, Park specifically is a bad idea. It always has been. It has been from the beginning. It started off with 26 states and one district of Columbia joining on with, with Pearson, a company that is under indictment from the federal government and two separate states, New York and California. Standardized testing in this way is forcing standardized learning, number one. Two, the government actually came out and said this year that they would not be withholding funding for, for retribution for students not taking the test. They said it last year and it became in effect this year again. I think the reason why the standardized testing is not being, uh, is not being held to the students' records because the parents took a stand when they saw something that was idiotic. Parents who actually took the park test, who took uh, practice test, and when put to the board and asked anybody on the board if they indeed even tried to take the test, not one of them did. I don't know how many of the Board of Education currently has taken the test, but I know that I went on as a college educated person, I didn't understand half the questions. I didn't even understand what they were going for. The results have come back from, from Illinois. Illinois proved that not one student is above proficient in mathematics according to Park. Not one student. That means not one advanced student in math, not one student who got perfect scores on ACTs, not one student that got perfect scores throughout the four years of high school is advanced proficient according to Park. <laughs> and I you. am all for, for opting out. Yeah, I'm sorry, time's up. <laughs> You'll get another opportunity. Uh, we're, we have another question, which is a, a bit of a follow-up on what uh, Ms. Villani was just speaking. And I'm going to start with you, Ms. Guillaume, on this question. Uh, what can be done to encourage young women to be involved in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics? And what will you do to encourage young women to be involved in STEM? May you repeat that again, please? What can be done to encourage young women to be involved in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics? And what specifically, if elected, will you do to encourage young women to be involved in STEM? <coughs> uh, what I can do, I think, is to just be myself. Uh, I am a Linden graduate, I have a bachelor's degree, and I'm pursuing my master's degree. And, you know, going through the public, the Linden Public District schools, we have to take those courses or those classes anyway, where you have to take math, uh, language arts. And so I believe um, just being an example for them and encouraging them whether if it's uh, sending emails or just uh, figuring out what their struggles are. So perhaps maybe we need uh, tutors or um, people who are available who are 
who have knowledge in that area, in engineering or in science, so that these young ladies can perform and be excellent and be role models for other young girls who, who want to become an engineer or who want to become a chemist or a scientist because uh, gender does not, has nothing to do with what your goals are and what your ambitions are. You just have to have a desire and a dream and to excel. So I would do my best to accommodate them in the way that they need me to. Mr. Honan, how would you uh, encourage young women and young men to be involved <laughs> in STEM? Um, well, ultimately, I think you have to get these programs to your facility, to your, site, to your school. Um, and I think the administration, I think the Board of Ed, has to solicit the state to, to try to find these pro programs so you can bring them here. Because if you don't see it, it it's, it's out of mind. Um, so you, you got to bring them, you got to put up boards and have groups and class meetings to, to try to get the students to, to see what actually could be the potential and, and what programs are actually out there. To, to, and, and that's for any gender. Mr. Topoleski. Yeah, one of the issues with women especially is the stereotype of the, the geek because <laughs> it's math and science and, and things of that issue. So you gotta have to try to de-geekify it. The other thing, uh, one of the things that Lyndon is doing uh, in that is that right now uh, our science supervisor is, is a woman and our new science uh, inst uh, lead instructor is also a woman. And so just by having women in those, that position, uh, females get to see the fact that you can do that. Uh, obviously, I can't do it even though I was a technology teacher. Uh, I can't put forth the woman part. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Villani, how would you uh, support and encourage STEM? When I started my career in technology back in the early 90s, I was literally one of three women on a floor of hundreds of men. While it did serve me well, as that's where I met my husband, <laughs> um, it was kind of cool to me because I've always been a little bit of a rebel, in case those who don't know me. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was something that I loved. And what got me going in my career were mentors, were women who already forged their way through technology and up the ranks. I'd love to see that continue as we do with the Girl Scouts and have a mentorship program. Have the women come back to in, in the different technology fields, science, technology, engineering, and math, and be role models and mentors for our students here in Linden. Uh, Mr. Alvarez. Your thoughts on STEM? I think the problem with STEM is um, how boring it can be in the classroom. <laughs> and I, sometimes I blame, uh, you know, you have to engage kids nowadays. And the ways to engage kids is to take them out on field trips, go see STEM in real life. I think when you teach them the textbook, that's where you lose kids. And that is the problem with today. You have to engage the kids in STEM. And I think we, we can do it, uh, but it will take, get them out of the classroom and see how it actually works in the real world. Thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, start with um, you, um, Mr. Um, let's see, Honan, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask a, a different type of question. Um, what are your ideas specifically for increasing parental involvement in board meetings and other school functions? Well. You know what, as a product of a single mom, single parent, it's tough to, to participate in school activities and get there. And, and, and I understand that because you know what, life happens. Um, but I think uh, an older brother, a, uh, an uncle, an aunt, I think you know, sending the material homes because I get a bunch of it, letting them know what's taking place, the programs that are going on, to invite them in. I mean, I for one, I can tell you, um, I volunteered for numerous activities for my, for my daughter's school and have been turned down because of the amount of volunteers that go there. So it's, it's, it's out there, I think it does happen, but not only to the mother and father, I think you have to open it up to grandparents, aunts, uncles, and I do see that, so I, I think that's a, a, a good way of going at it. Uh, Mr. Tapoleski? What are your ideas specifically for increasing parental involvement? 
That is a question that's been plaguing the Board of Education for the 15 years that I've been on it. We have tried to come up with so many different ways to get people to show up here at, at the board meetings especially. Uh, from having activities from different schools and, and you would get a half full audience when the kids would perform and stuff like that and, and when that was done with, uh, especially when it was the elementary schools, the, the parents would take the children home and leave with them and so uh, you don't have the parents staying behind to, to uh, see what actually goes on. Unfortunately, uh, the only time we usually get a full house, uh, Linden's been very fortunate that we haven't had one, is when there's controversy. Uh, we've been on a fairly even keel and we haven't had the kind of controversy that would fill a, a, an auditorium like this. Uh, if somebody can come up with ideas to get more people to come in here, I'm happy to listen to them. I'm sure Dr. Robitozzi, our superintendent, would be too. Um, it just doesn't happen, unfortunately. Ms. Villani. It always saddens me when I come to a Board of Education meeting or anything at the schools when parents aren't there and it's empty. And I wish there was like a magic answer. Two things that I would like to see done is to, number one, better leverage the technology that we have in sending two-way communications to and from the school. I know Dr. Rapatozzi has started uh, implementing some key initiatives in the past year or two and I'd like to see that take one step further. The other thing that I think in our community is very important is we have a very diverse community of many different languages. Something we started at School 9 is to send home parent notices in multiple languages. We have in our school um, a large uh, Haitian community as well as Polish and Spanish. So when we send something out from, say, the fifth grade class and we need parents involved, it goes out in English, in Haitian, Creole, in Polish, and in Spanish. Okay. Mr. Alvarez, your Repeat thoughts the question, on it. It's uh, what are your ideas specifically for increasing parental involvement in board meetings and other school functions? I, I think we can utilize technology. Uh, more uh, via Facebook, uh, emails. Nowadays, everybody has a cell phone on hand, so we can do a better job doing that. Also, I think that you know the Board of Ed and also the um, uh, the City Hall should be uh, engaging everybody, not just the board. I think we should have activities where we can make a family night um, and ha go out there and have fun and talk about education. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of times people come and sit here it's like, wow, well, I have to read this. Let's make it more engaging. Okay. Uh, Ms. Guillaume. Uh, I agree with Alex. Uh, I think I did a survey with some parents in our district and uh, some feedback that I got back from them was I think we can create a buddy system uh, where we can get uh, invites from a friend to come with like another friend and like a continuous for like uh, robo calls or, and to send out emails, uh, phone calls. Uh, like Alex said, uh, social media is very big and I understand that the night where majority of parents come out would be back to school night because uh, parents are extremely busy. You have some parents that are working two jobs, some parents who are single parents so I think that maybe at back to school night, we could have like a roster where parents could um, sign in and leave their email and their contact number so that we can get back to them or having a raffle. Uh, I understand that with some parents, it's very busy. They have very busy schedules and uh, they need things to help them come out. So maybe if we did a raffle, where the PTA could do something uh, and then we could give the winner a prize and then whatever we have left over, we can keep it to increase um, our budget. So I think uh, the more things that we do for the families as a whole, the better we would be to have more parents come out. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Villani, uh, we have a, a question. Um, uh, that I would like to start with you. Um, how can you help the minorities 
and all of the diversity in linen uh, to be included effectively in the school system? Well, number one, it would be re recognizing what different languages are being spoken in each school. If you have certain, like certain schools have certain um, ethnicities that are predominant there, and make sure that all communication goes out in languages where they can understand. Number two, it would be great if we can reach out to those different communities to try and get somebody who's willing to give back to the community and act as either an interpreter or a mentor for the parents. That would be two ways that I would like to see done for incorporating all the different diversity. Mr. Topoleski, do you have thoughts on uh, including the minorities effectively in the community? Well, our uh, ESL program and our world language program are two of the outstanding programs and, and they do a lot of work uh, in getting our students to realize the different cultures. Uh, we had a group of students just this summer spend a month in Italy teaching English to elementary school students in Italy. Uh, we have groups of students that go to, to China. Uh, we have uh, just Monday and Tuesday we had groups from Germany and, and uh, France come, or yeah, I believe it was France come here and our students will be going there. And it's not closed off to anyone. So if you're a, a participant in a language, that's available to you. Uh, and as a result, I mean, I wish I had a program like that when I was in high school. <laughs> uh, you know, so hopefully uh, that word filters down. Uh, fortunately, the district itself is restricted as to how much money it can spend on publicizing a lot of this stuff. Okay, Mr. Honan, how would you effectively uh, include minorities in all the diverse cultures to be effective? Well, I, I, my thing is getting getting the message out there, and you know, sending something like this home to a parent who is you know Spanish speaking, doesn't know how to read English, they're not going to get that message. I think we, Lyndon does offer an ESL program, but if they are not able to communicate and read what's coming in, they're not going to know. And it's not only Spanish, I, I believe it's Haitian, you know, Dominican, whatever the case may be. I, I think in order to get people to get involved, they have to understand, they have to know where to go and where to look for and how to communicate. And if they're not getting that, it's, it's a, it's a no-win situation. <laughs> Ms. Guillaume. Uh, <clears throat> I am a Haitian American. Uh, when I was in high school, I was involved in a lot of programs, and one of the programs I was involved in was the Haitian Club. And uh, while I was in school, we had a lot of programs related to cultural. I understand that all schools have cultural awareness in their in our district, and uh, in. In this year, we our uh, cultural clubs have expanded. There's German club. There's so many different clubs. I believe it's uh, allowing the parents to know that we have things available for them and for their children. So sending uh, things in different languages so that they can understand because some people do not speak English. And we as a community have to accommodate everyone. So I believe that if we could just uh, allow parents to know that we're, that we're trying our best and we try to do something different than what we're doing now, we could, we could help everyone. Mr. Alvarez. My idea would be to have a multicultural night district-wide where every school will have an event where the kids take part in that event. They'll come, they'll do dances, they'll read poetry from each different country. So this will be one night to the whole district where every parent can get a chance to see the other cultures we have in this city. And that will be my view, if I can say, of mm -hmm. a district-wide multicultural night. Okay. Um, I'd like to start with you on the next question. Um, what are your thoughts on the performing arts and the, and the inclusion in the uh, school programming? The performing arts go hand in hand with academics. I believe if you have a child that's engaged in the performing arts, he wants to come to school, he wants to 
take point that dance in that music class, and you also will do well in the other classes. So performing arts are extremely important right now in the public school system. I'm all for it. Okay, Ms. Guillaume. Uh, I was involved in musical theater and in uh, music classes. I was a part of the plays at Linden High School, and for me, it changed my life. It, it was an outlet for me, and I believe that every child should have a source of outlet. And it's so many students that are involved in our district where they're part of a dance uh, in our schools or part of musical theater or they play an instrument. So we have to accommodate everyone. It's not all about sports. It's about accommodating our youth in our district. Mr. Honan? Well, I do think the performing arts is, is, is huge, especially right now amongst the youth. Um, I, for one, did not participate in the performing arts. I participated in the sports. And I know when I was playing basketball and football and I didn't hold up a, a certain grade point average, I didn't play. And that broke my heart if I was you know, cut from the team or sent home because I didn't have an average. And I think giving these kids an instrument, uh, a play, uh, a musical, whatever the case may be, I think if they're able to hold up their end of the academics, it gives them an added incentive to participate in, in these types of activities. Mr. Topoleski. Yeah. Fine and performing arts are extremely important in, in the education of a student. Studies have shown that students that uh, participate, that play an instrument, for example, have higher test scores in math and, and reading. Uh, my daughter, I know, uh, became a better reader because she got involved with plays and had to read scripts. Uh, and also in her own uh, ability to speak to uh, in public. Uh, because she went on the stage to perform. Uh, so uh, Linden uh, was just recently named one of the top 100 schools in the nation for uh, music. And so uh, I think we do a good job here, and uh, we continue to. Ms. Villani. I absolutely agree. I think that's one of the things that Linden does very well, and I'm, I'm very proud when I saw that in the paper. Uh, so and Mr. Sobolewski was correct. Study after study has shown that students who are actively engaged in other curricular, extracurricular activities do better in school. Students in band and chorus and act in sports. Students taking shop classes tend to be more engaged in their education. So I think the performing arts along with all the other electives are very important to a well-rounded student. Thank you. Um, I think this may have to be our last question, so I'm going to start with you, Ms. Bellani, and it's slightly uh, different. Um, how much support should the school district offer for, co for continuing education for teachers and staff and for the general public? How much responsibility should the school district offer for continuing education? A well-educated teacher staff, a well-educated community, it only benefits us. That said, I would also have to see what we're talking about in terms of budget and numbers. So there's no, there's, I, I can say something that sounds very pretty and very nice, but the reality is I don't know what exactly we're, we're talking about when it comes to money. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Topoleski, can you address that? The state requires that, student, that teachers uh, have a minimum number of uh, hours per year in, in extra education. Uh, through our professional development days, uh, we offer a good portion of those hours to uh, staff without having to, for them to expend any extra funds. As far as uh, the public in general, we do offer courses, classes here at night, uh, but primarily in, uh, they're funded through uh, the county uh, college. We get funding from the county college for those courses, uh, for most of them. I, I'm not familiar with all of the evening program. Okay, Mr. Honan, do you have some thoughts on support, how much support the school district should give to uh, continuing education for teachers and for the general public? Well, support, yes, I think that's a given. How much? I'm, I'm, I'm really not privy to that information or what actually is entailed to, 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 to put that kind of cost figure on it. Um, 
I, I don't think you would want to put a, a figure on that in, in, in order to cut back on programs. So um, I, I hopefully, if, if elected, I would probably get more involved in, and get that information so I can bring it to the table. Okay, Ms. Guillaume. Um, I agree. Uh, support is definitely needed. I know that we do have night school and that we do have uh, a GED program for, uh, for parents or for whoever wants to come to get a GED at Linden High School. Uh, as far as budgeting, I'm not quite familiar with that topic. So if I were to, to get elected, I would sit with my board members and um, the administrator and as well as the person who's in charge of budgeting so I could get a better understanding of how I could uh, get that answer for that parent. Mr. Alvarez. In regards to teacher, I think we do a great job because every time I see the list of we, uh, the, the teachers we send out there to uh, get professional development, it's outstanding, outstanding uh, workshops to get uh, experience and come back with that experience back to the classroom. So in that aspect, I think we do a really good job. The general community, as, as we said before, we offer some courses at nighttime. Uh, I think they're very low cost. Uh, so we have an opportunity for almost anyone to want to enroll as long as they are Linden residents, obviously. So I think uh, always there's room for improvement. I think we can do better, but uh, obviously it comes down to the funds available. And unfortunately, it always comes to the funds. Okay. Um, actually, we have a little bit more time. So I want to ask uh, a question that came from <coughs> you'll know who. Um, <laughs> and I think I'm going to start with you, Mr. Topoleski. Um, and it is, would you be willing to listen to students and let them be involved? For, for the one, last, let's do this for just one minute. I think you can okay. do it in one minute. For, for the last two years, I served on a group called the Educational Support Team uh, for students. And so I did meet with students uh, about once a month, unfortunately, uh, coordinating uh, with the district, uh, with the classes with the, all the different activities that go on and stuff. I have no problem listening with, uh, to students. Uh, they have tremendous insight. Uh, when my son was a student here, he actually, and we have students here now uh, who are working for the, uh, for the district by helping uh, kids with their computers and stuff like that. Uh, my son was a, a, a part-time tech. He was actually hired to work uh, with that so uh, when you involve students that way you you start to hear and and uh, understand more of their concerns I know uh, some of the concerns that I got over the number of uh, we tried to address right away but it, it's very difficult because things in education don't move as quickly as you would like thank you Miss Villani would you be willing to listen to students if elected Absolutely. I think the only way we move forward is by listening to the community. That includes the students, the parents, the teachers, the educators, and the board. Everybody who has a stakehold in Linden educational system should have a say in our system, and they should be heard and respected. Thank you. Mr. Alvarez. Definitely. Uh, it's funny how when you teach students, you teach them, but you also learn from them. So it's a two-way street, and definitely you hear the students you empower them and you let them take ownership of the issues we have at hand. So we should listen to them. Ms. Guillaume. Yes, without a doubt. Uh, students like the fact that they could state their opinions and not to be judged. You know, nobody wants to be judged with expressing how they feel. So I think, of course, if we say that we're for the youth, why would we not, why would we not listen to their opinion? I value their opinion. Uh, being a substitute teacher, I get to listen to their dreams, their goals, their desires, and I support them 100%. Mr. Honan. Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, learning from the youth, you know, we as adults become better. Um, they're the front line of defense. You know, they're in the classrooms, they're doing the classes, they're, they're taking the, um, assignments you're getting feedback they're talking to each other and you know they all talk to each other and they bring that to the administration the faculty and if if we're not listening to them i think we're doing ourselves a great injustice 
Well, thank you. And thank you for the questions. <laughs> These were good questions, and we were glad to have you participate in, in giving the candidates an opportunity to respond to them. So uh, at this point, we're going to move toward the closing statements. And we have two minutes for the closing statements from each of the candidates. And we're going to go in the reverse order to what we did in the opening. So we're going to start with Mr. Topolevsky. Uh, Raymond Topolevsky. Right, thank you. Once again, I want to thank everyone for coming here. Uh, the questions tonight were outstanding. And I hope uh, you learned a little bit about us, uh, myself, I've served on the board now for 15 years, uh, not only uh, here in Linden, but I also serve on the New Jersey School Boards uh, as a, a member of the Delegate Assembly, a member of the uh, Legislative Committee, and uh, of the uh, Committee for Bylaws for uh, the State Board of Ed. Uh, when I first ran uh, back in 2000, my daughter yelled at me because she was still in high school, and she said, I thought you were going to wait till I got out. <laughs> uh, the election at that time was in April, and she graduated in June. So I, you know, I said, come on, cut me some slack two months. Uh, it's been a wonderful time serving. Uh, during the time, uh, one of the things you may not know about Board of Education, but we're the only elected officials that actually have to attend training. So you can't, you don't, once you get elected, you're not just a board member. You have to be trained to be a board member. No other elected official in the state of New Jersey has to go through that. Uh, I've gone through that. Not only have I gone through that, but I've gone beyond that, and I've achieved the, the rank of a master board member, uh, which they actually measure that stuff. Um, I hope to be able to serve this district and you people for another three years. Uh, my name is Raymond Topoleski, ballot position three. Come out and vote in November. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Alexander Alvarez. Well, I want to thank you for coming here tonight. Um, like I said, I've been here for two years, and you are the product of what we're trying to establish in this city, right here in front of us. You are our main concern, the children of this city. We want to give you the tools to become successful after your uh, education career is over. So with that being said, as a teacher, as a parent, I'm looking forward to making this district even better, have better things for you in the future, and um, that's all I can say. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, then Daniel P. Honan. Um, well, first, I'd like to thank the the, women of, uh, the League of Women Voters for inviting me to this event. I think it was fantastic, and it was really a nice surprise to see the students here, in which we ultimately are trying to serve. Um, with that, I would like to be, you know, hopefully elected, and to try to gain, you know, become a part of a team to hopefully improve, continue to improve on the the system for the faculty and ultimately the, the city residents of Linden. Um, but with that, uh, I'm Danny Honan, and I'm pole position two. Thank you. Okay. Um, then the next speaker is Shanader Guillaume. Um, I would like to thank everyone for coming out. Um, I am I am a Linden resident. I, I love my city. I love being involved. I always was involved in everything. I support not only my siblings or friends, but people that I just meet. Uh, I know that there's a lot of things that I have to learn, and I'm willing to learn, because without, without that, then I won't be able to deliver. So I understand that my, the youth in this community and the taxpayers have uh, certain concerns that they want to address, and I would do my best to to address them and I will make sure that I get the training and if I have doubts or questions I will seek uh, information but I'm here for you guys and because of you I would not be here so I just thank you for everything that you're doing I thank you for believing in me and supporting me my name is Janator Gilliam and my number is number one uh, okay the final speaker is Teresa Bellani 
Well, I can't be the only one who doesn't thank you. So thank you very much for putting this together. And thank you again, the community, for coming out and supporting us. To be honest, and anybody who knows our situation, I didn't have my kids in the public school at first because eight, nine years ago when we were looking at the school system, there was no way I was going to let my kids come to Linden from what I heard. I put my kids, we put our kids in Catholic school and from speaking to the parents and the educators here in the community, we ended up reversing that decision and pulled them out of Catholic school in first grade and put them in school nine. And it was hands down the best educational decision that we made. I believe wholeheartedly in public education. I am a product of both Catholic and public school. But we pay taxes here. We live here. We are raised here. We have to give back to our students and give them all the tools they need to succeed. You know, it's corny to say they're our future, but they are our future. And what are they going to have if we don't give them the best that we have? I will give my all, as I always do, to the children of Linden as a CCD teacher, as a Girl Scout leader, working on the board of directors for the Friends of the Library, and being a very active and vocal member of the PTA. I am poll position number four. My name is Teresa Villani, and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. You know, you are very lucky people. You have a good group of candidates who want to volunteer to serve you in the community. Yes, now's the time to give them a good hand. <laughs> We, we really want to thank you all for coming, and we want to thank the crew who's been doing the work of taping. Uh, and now it's important. Uh, the candidates have discussed with you their thoughts and their issues. Now it's your job to go and vote on November 3rd. You have to look at these people and determine which three you're going to elect to the Board of Education. And it's important that you go and vote. You get your families to vote. You get your neighbors. Everybody needs to vote and cast their ballot. OK? Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.